The reason we call him a healer was because he kept bringing up front people that were no good. And it's amazing the guys that betrayed him were the guys that he exposed himself to. He told him where he would be in the Garden of Gethsemane. He talked about knowing that people would kill him. How do we handle the attacks of those who can raise up issues that other people don't raise because their closeness to us gives them legitimacy that the criticism and attacks from others don't have. Some people bring up stuff and it just doesn't matter because they don't seem to be significant. How do we handle when the attacks from those who may be harboring resentments that we don't know about we think about the best timing of their attack so they can get out the real issues. How do we handle that? The reaction of Moses is interesting and it's significant. I got to stay Bible here so I don't want you to ever think so. Pastor Rush had something on his mind. Pastor Rush was chilling. God knows something's on your heart. I'm good. Moses, look at this. Moses remained calm. When they came after him, when those closest to him tweeted, Moses, is it right there in your word? He remained calm. In the last chapter of the, the 11, he exploded, remember, and he became really frustrated over that manna issue. But in this instance, when the attack was personal and it came from people that were close to him, he remained calm. He thought, now wait a minute, I got to deal with this manner issue, but now y'all, okay, oh, oh, so you want to know, you, you want to attack me personally now? When the attack gets up close and personal, remain calm. When the attack takes us by total and complete surprise, Remain calm. If you are a fool, don't prove it now. Make your enemy go back and reload. Make them say that idiot must not have heard. He must not. Make them go and get three more lioness. When we've been hit so hard that all the wind has been knocked out of us, remain calm. When your traditional enemies are celebrating because they have noticed that friends who you have empowered, people that you have trusted, folk that have now become close to you are now on their side. Remain calm. Don't respond to it. An up close and personal attack is not the time to lose it. An up close and personal attack is not the time to resign and throw in the towel. You can't do it right now. You may feel like, but don't do it right now. An up close and personal attack is not the time to panic. An up close and personal time attack is not the time to remove people from office or to go public after somebody. That action often generates sympathy for the attacker and it reduces you in the eye of those who are still trying to support you. There are people that when others come against you, they are still standing by your side trying to decide who they're going to believe. Above and all, everything you do, remain calm. There are still people that God has sent to be by your side. They're trying to see how you're handling what you're going through. Stop letting other people make you look like a fool publicly, telling you, girl, I slapped that heifer. Man, I cuss him out. Don't trip. Cut that person away from you. They're too close. Remain calm. That's what Moses did. That's what Jesus did. You should remain calm because of how this ends. Oh, 
This is why you should remain calm. Because if you look at how Numbers 12 ends, it ends with the words, and the Lord, and the second verse says, and the Lord heard it. Moses not only heard what Miriam and Aaron said, but the Lord heard them. Those to whom Miriam and Aaron spoke directly to, they're not the only ones that heard what he said. The Lord also heard them. And when the attacks get up close and personal, don't forget that the Lord also hears what people are saying. When the rumors start to spread and in your windows start going crazy and the gossip circulates, let's never forget that the Lord also hears. And let me tell you what's so cool about this. When the attackers have been planning a session and they're getting ready to take you out, remember that God heard the plan firsthand. And God knows the charges that are about to be brought up against you. He knows who's about to make the motions. He knows who's about to push sin. And the Lord hears who is really contributing to the conversation. And that's when God tells you, stand still and know that I'm God. I'm going to let you know who said it. I'm going to let you know why they said it. I'm going to let you know when they said it, because when it's all said and done, they're going to still see if you handle this like the leader that they've been jealous of. Moses, if you act like them, they're going to know you weren't from me. Some things have to hurt to prove that you are who you say you are. Some things have to hit so you can prove that you are who you say you are. And if you listen to God, God will tell you, shut up. Don't say it. All your friends will tell you, you've got to respond. God said you respond by standing still. Let me tell you how crazy this is. And I'm going to have to let y'all go because I'll run off with this thing. In watching the wildebeest and the lioness, see, the lion didn't get his cue to attack until the wildebeest started running. As long as the wildebeest stood still, the lion couldn't move because the lion is only motivated by movement. When you stand still, the Bible says resist the devil he don't want to fool with you because there's no life in you. But do you know how much life it takes to stand still? Anybody ever watch somebody in real deep water in the ocean? When they're in the ocean out there in deep water, have you noticed you see their heads and people just look like they're standing up? The water's a thousand feet deep, but what's happening underneath the surface? There's movement going on, and that movement just keeps you above the water. They're not going anywhere, but they're not going under. Some people are saying things to see if you can go. Touch somebody and tell them, I can't swim, but somehow I'm still floating. I can't swim.